Good morning. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Lorene. I'm actually in the front porch right now. I've been having a kind of a crazy week. Didn't think I was going to have a crazy week because, you know, on the calendar it always doesn't uh, look very particular. Um, but it, uh, Wednesday's turning out to be a little bit nuts because I have started a writing course for the next three weeks and uh, I forgot that I had homework. Ooh. So, um, I just thought I'll throw a quick video together and the light is gorgeous in here right now. We get a lot of southern light, so um, it's really a nice warm place. So I have uh, three books I'm going to talk to you about. Oh yeah, I, I need to show you my... Did you see my lipstick? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, my girlfriend and I went shopping and we picked up three different uh, lipsticks thinking... You know, I wanted something to sort of balance the glasses and so on. And so we came up with this rather bold one. I should have looked at the name of it. Anyways, it's just, it's fun because I don't usually wear anything this uh, this dramatic. So the first book I'm mentioning to you is Under Song by Kathleen Winter, who won the Giller shortlisted for uh, Annabelle, different book. Now, I didn't finish this book and I think uh, I'm not really giving it due uh, do credit. It's one of these books, and, and I've just read a number of them in this at the same, like just a few weeks ago, so it's it has the same kind of structure in that we begin in the middle of uh, the character's life and we're going to end sort of close to the end of the character's life, but it's there's not really a story arc. It's, it's going to be, um, and so far, halfway through. It's about... Um, it, there's about it's a, what am I trying to say there isn't really going to be a high point in the story it's going to be rather along the same lines and and we have our main character Dixon who has been asked to look after um, uh, William Wordsworth's sister whose name is Dorothy now, I don't know anything about the Wordsworth except that he was a poet. And the way this book is uh, written, it implies that uh, Wordsworth used his sister's diaries as uh, points of inspiration because she had much better uh, observational skills. Now, could this be attributed to uh, his lack of um, great eyesight? Or he was kind of a kind of a walking disaster in terms of being a bit deaf and, you know, just all kinds of bits and pieces of not fully engaged senses and his sister on the other hand is hypersensitive to a lot of things so uh, he uses her reflections and uh, as starting points for his inspiration and she seems to be um, quite okay with that so because she tends to be a, a hypersensitive individual, she's someone who doesn't present to society in a way that society is comfortable with. And so Dixon has been tasked with kind of overseeing her through um, the, ta well, sort of the middle to the end of her life. And that's basically what we're looking at. So if you're someone who in knows anything about the Wordsworth, family. I think this book would appeal to you. If you like um, a very poetical, um, observational kind of writing where you're not really looking for a lot of plot, then I think this book will really appeal to you. It is really quite lovely and I think the biggest issue for me is that it's just the fourth one in a row. So just a poor timing. I'm not going to DNF it officially. I'm going to just put it to, it's a library book, so um, I'm going to put it back on my list and I'll pick it up sometime probably in the summer where I, I tend to be a bit more open-minded about nature writing and, and just, you know, not looking for entertainment in the summer. I'm a bit more laid back and whereas in the winter I tend to need some kind of distraction. So, um, yeah, I really, so far, I recommend this book. I think that in the end, I'm going to really enjoy it. I'm just going to set it aside for now. Now, the other book that I read that I, oh my gosh, I really enjoyed this one. It's A Guide to South African, I'm sorry, A Guide to the Birds of East Africa by Nicholas Drayson. And the cover is kind of fun, isn't it? This was brought to my attention by, uh, I, oh, 
I should look those things up before I actually tell you about them, shouldn't I? But it was another booktuber who brought it forward. And I think this is a book that is has been really quite undersold. Um, quite lovely. Of course, it was the bird motif that caught me because that's the kind of nature rating I tend to read is um, bird related or animal related and um, ecosystem related. And our uh, author is actually an ornithologist and um, has written also a book called A Confessing to Murder, which I'm going to uh, pick up. So um, our main character, Mr. Malik, is a retired gentleman of, I'm going to say, East Indian descent. And he has uh, a factory that his daughter is now running in um, Kenya. And this whole story takes place in Kenya. And as part of his retirement, he uh, has joined these bird watching walks that are put out by a woman who has um, kind of created the whole ecotourism around ecosystems, in particular with birds. And she has trained a lot of the guides in, um, in Kenya to do a very good job of explaining um, when you go on safari or whatever it is, particularly with focus on birds. So that's that's the setting. And Mr. Malik has, does, does, over time, he has just developed quite an affection for, um, do, 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 what is her name? Ruth, isn't it? Come on, it needs to be here. Mrs. Mikwa, which is not her, uh, she's originally from Ireland, so that she's not a Kenyan lady. Rose. <laughs> Rose. Uh, well, that all seems like everything's okay, but there's going to be a ball, and he decides that he wants to uh, ask her um, for uh, to, attend, to attend with him. And he tells his two fellows, uh, friends, at the club that he goes to, and out of the blue, in walks someone from his childhood past that is not his favorite person. And this person decides, well, he's going to also ask Rose Nikwa to uh, attend the ball. So they end up on a competition. Who can see the most birds? And whoever wins the most bird watching finds is going to be the one who can actually invite Rose. So this is the, the sort of structure of what we encounter but we have encountered so much more because the the antagonist mr khan is uh sort of a ne'er-do-well he's not like not totally a ne'er-do-well he's kind of a a charming just skirting the surface not quite in the bad bo bad boys books <laughs> He's an adult man, but let's call him a boy. And, you know, he's still, he's just on the edge of being the black sheep in the family. And Mr. Malik is extremely honest and extremely conscientious. So they're very polar opposite in their ways. And so are they in their methodology for finding all of these birds. And each one has got a backstory. And Mr. Malik is actually a fairly complicated character. And I don't want to give it away because it's one of those books where, it's, first of all, it's not very long. Um, it's only 200 pages. I think I read it in, I, I think I actually stayed up late and read it all in one day. I just loved this book. And I, well, I forgot what I was talking about. But anyhow, um, the the point I wanted to make, I think, was that the book, if I give too much of the plot away, I think that you won't enjoy it as much because it is so short. Mr. Malik is not a complicated character, but he's a deep character. He's a kind, deep, very, the kind of person you really want to have in your life. And um, so I just, I really recommend it, but it's not going to get any great big awards. The writing is is lovely and it's very observational and the descriptions around the birds are really quite lovely. Um, but I think it is a book that's going to fly under the radar and not receive the kudos that it really deserves. So I give this a five out of five and think you will really enjoy it. So the last book I read is a young adults book and by Ellen Stratton, The Way Back Home. This book I really enjoyed. Uh, Zoe is um, a young 
angry girl. Her grandma is getting exceeding, exceedingly uh, more, mm, well, okay, she has Alzheimer's, but grandma's not going into it gently. She's, uh, she's not an angry Grammy, but she's just also a survivor. And so her, her world, she's really struggling to hang on to her world, but she's doing it, you know, with a, um, <laughs> not a ton of grace. <laughs> and so Zoe has decided that she's going to rescue grandma and they end it's a Canadian author which is kind of fun that's uh, um, so it takes place uh, somewhere out west and the two of them get on to a not too far out west and they get on a bus and they head to Toronto and um, Grammy has decided that if she could only get to see her other son whom she's been estranged from for quite some time then somehow it will all be resolved and whether um, Grammy has good instincts or not Zoe's not able to judge she just does not want Grammy to be going into a setting for Alzheimer's she just feels that Grammy really wants to be at home Grammy does really want to be at home so Grammy's kind of past the point where she can facilitate this on her own Zoe is too young to really facilitate this on their own so their dilemma is to seek out this other son and hope that somehow this is going to be the magic key to it all. Well, it doesn't quite turn out the way Zoe expects and grandma is getting to the point where she no longer has expectations. She just becomes very much in the moment. But there are just such kind strangers who help out and eventually the brother is found, but I don't want to give that away because it's very, um, dramatic and unexpected and positive. Now the whole book is just really really positive despite uh, we're dealing with the the trauma that Zoe's experienced in losing her grandma to Alzheimer's and the lack of compassion and understanding that her parents have around it. And they're not completely devoid of compassion but they're just really preoccupied with the problem in front of them and are not seeing Zoe's relationship to that problem at all. So they're outright, they are they are unresponsive. I oh yeah, again, totally bought into this book, read it really fast. It also is fairly short, uh, just 260 pages. And I also read it very quickly, and probably in two afternoons or something like that. So I, I gave that a five out of five as well. So, you know, um, kind of, yeah, no, they're not really books that you can contrast and compare. They're just two really solid books that I was able to read. This plant just really wants to be part of the video, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. I haven't got any real other things to talk about. So I hope your reading adventures and dreams continue to come true. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye for now.